let's start at the beginning. We're sheet mulching this entire 12,000 square foot area over in front of Franklin Dining Commons at UMass. We're going to be growing a permaculture garden. It's going to be acting as a sustainable garden because it's not going to need as many resources and it's going to be a lot more resistant to drought. So this is the reason why we're layering all this organic matter. It's beefing up the soil by about six to eight inches over an entire 12,000 square foot area. And that's huge. That's about 200,000 pounds of organic matter that we're laying on this lawn, completely transforming it into a permaculture garden. Well, part of the, uh, the location scheme was um, that it would provide the dining hall, which exists a mere 10 feet away from the lawn, um, with edible plants um, on our campus that can feed and nourish our student body um, for free. And so now what we're attempting to do is grow food all the while growing soil and growing the very land that we live on in an eco-sensitive way. So we're, we're taking this no-till gardening method, we're bringing it to UMass, and what we're doing first is we're aerating the soil, we're reducing the compaction but disturbing the soil a lot less. So then the microorganisms, which are already there, are not going to go anywhere else. They're just going to get a lot of food added to them, which is what we do next. We add about four inches or so of compost. So we're adding that right onto the existing grass, and then we're putting cardboard on top of that. So that cardboard is going to act more as the barrier layer. It's going to prevent the grass, which is underneath there, from coming up. On top of the cardboard, we're putting a mulch layer. And that can be anything from wood chips, which is what we use, to straw, to grass clippings, or yard waste, or garden waste, anything. Anything that's going to hold in moisture and hold in nutrients for the plants. Let that sit for about five months, and in the spring, you're going to have this great growing medium that plants are just going to thrive in. I think everyone should know how to grow their own food, know that they can do it, and it's not very hard. If everyone has that in their minds when they go to cook dinner every night, it's going to make a huge impact on how our country runs and I think the overall health of people, um, which is one of the biggest epidemics facing our country is just our food. We don't have to see up front um, any of the detrimental impacts of the way that our food is being made. If you're not being forced to face that, um, you just don't think about it. And students will have to if, with this project. American agriculture is really good at one thing, producing cheap food, so there's a lot of it you know, widely available, and if you have a, a medium income, uh, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, but there's some unintended consequences that come with industrial agriculture. Um, resource depletion, pollution, uh, and, um, and disruption of rural communities particularly. And so um, we think we can do better. Um, Agricultural sustainability starts to look at some of these issues, but permaculture really takes it home. Too often times we just look for the, okay, what's, what's the most expensive and therefore the best solution, but sometimes the best solution starts out with the simplest form. With permaculture, we can simply say, okay, what do we have? What can, what can we use that is completely natural, that is in the air, that is... Um, in our plates even as of now that we can later use on as compost. What do we have now? And I feel like that's the best place to start if you're looking for a solution. It's using food that came from the dining halls that has been broken down into compost and reusing it and putting it back into the garden to build, you know, to grow food that's going to be used in the dining halls again. It's, it's very cyclical and it really localizes the way that we think about food, the way we get food. This uh, garden really tells students to it is um, the food that has been served at UMass is fresh you can get. And second as well to it is to educate the student that the sustainability is what UMass uh, want to embrace and we want to do more. I believe the awareness that comes with it and the, the sense of power and, and participation that comes with uh, students growing their own food, I think that's where the big differences will come. Uh, it's in, it's in uh, helping students um, recognizing that they can do something about some of the problems in the world by focusing locally, by focusing on their own backyard right here at UMass on the campus. So I see this project as being a model, a replicable model that can be used everywhere. And that's what's really important is that we empower people and inspire people to say this is how you do it. It's very easy to do. Just get a lot of people involved to have it be a community effort and you can build these gardens everywhere. Thank you.
We finished sheet mulching in November 2010, and from there, the whole plan was to just let it sit for a good five months. We held a design charrette on campus, which involved over 100 different participants coming from all different departments on campus. We had students, faculty, administrators, and we had people from the local community, and even students from other colleges that drove over an hour and a half to get here all on a Saturday afternoon to participate in the design of the campus permaculture garden, which is huge. You know, just the fact that we had that many people come on a Saturday to design a garden just really shows the movement and the momentum that this project has created in the local community. What I didn't know is how inspiring the, the undergrads would be to me. So I'm a slightly older grad student and I'm the only one in the group. And all these 20-somethings are kind of blowing my mind with their energy. There's this renewed energy towards healing the earth issues like food systems that are broken and um, agriculture systems and just living in a manner that's more sustainable. And I feel like the students really get that already and it's been fun to watch. When we started un uncovering um, you know, some of the wood chips and exposing some of the cardboard that had about you know, halfway broken down at this point, the soil seemed very alive. You know, we noticed that there was a whole fungi network that had taken place. We noticed that there were worms, um, probably about 15 to 20 worms every square foot. So what we're talking about here are some of the uh, things we're putting in the planting hole. The basic um, premise or the operating assumption is that we're trying to create an environment that's optimal for the plants to manifest their full potential. So our objective is to get a healthily functioning digestive tract that has access to all the food it needs so that plant can grow you know, strong and healthy. So we want to have a, a full nutritional profile, mineralogical, biological, etc., cetera, um, of everything that plant would like to have so it can realize its yield, growth, flavor, nutrition, pest disease resistance attributes. So there's a lot happening right here. There's, there's a people space, uh, it's a production space, it's, it's, um, it's got areas where uh, stormwater is being infiltrated off of some of the sidewalks. It's, uh, it's got water tanks for collecting rainwater at some point. Uh, so so it's, it's gonna, a space that's going to do a lot of different things and, and not just be food production for the dining common. The permaculture garden here is a little bit less about, about nutrients and serving students the food, although that's critical to the education, which I think is the main purpose of this garden. Hands-on experience and classroom experience are two completely um, important things. I think they need to work together. Students really want to participate. They want to get out there and gain first-hand experience in food growing and, and working with water in the landscape and in building houses and maintaining all of our human systems. And Folks just crave this experience of learning um, by doing. What's incredible is that you know UMass right now is really one of the first uh, public institutions in the entire nation that's doing permaculture like this directly on the campus and making it extremely accessible for students everywhere to come here to get involved, to grab a shovel in between classes and be really a part of their campus sustainability initiative. So now we're at this point where we've planted a lot of things, probably about 50 to 100 different species and we are you know just on our way to making this permaculture garden that's going to be a model for campuses across the entire nation. the whole scale of sustainability. We have degenerative activities and then we have regeneration, with sustainability being really in the middle of it all. You know, we could be striving for more than sustainability. We're going beyond sustainability. That's what permaculture is all about. It's going to regenerate a landscape to start being more productive and that's better for the entire ecosystem, for plants, for animals, for insects, and, and for human benefit.
trees, berry bushes, nut bushes, perennial vegetables, things like that. Over the past year and a half since this project got started, amazing things have happened. We had over a thousand volunteers total show up to help in the sheet mulch, the design, and the implementation phases. That included students and staff, as well as local community organizations and local schools. We grew over a thousand pounds of produce in about 3,500 square feet of bed space, all while transforming a campus unproductive space into one that's thriving and sustainable and educational for the campus community. I think it's better, I think it tastes better, I think it makes the food look better. The staff is excited, they're getting fresh herbs and vegetables, the students are excited, they get to produce food for their campus and other students, um, and the local community is getting a site that's educational, that they can learn from and uh, get ideas and then go out and mimic them in other places. There are thousands of students who walk by here every single day, students, faculty, and staff. So we can't feed them all, but what we can do is show them a new way of thinking about how land is used and where food is grown and who is growing food so we can change those paradigms. And that's, that's sent a pretty big ripple effect out there. People are contacting us from other schools and also from other countries, and it's just been really inspiring. It just feels good to say, oh, you mean we can actually not just be consumers, but we can actually be creators for what's good for us. And it, to me, it's about power. I mean, when I wrote Diet for a Small Planet 40 years ago, it was such joy of realizing that I didn't have to be a victim. I came into this class kind of not knowing what I could do or what my abilities were in terms of Im making a real impact. And that's kind of shown me, everyone in this class has shown me that if you take the initiative and you have the will and you have the drive, anything is possible. People are starting to come to UMass because of what we're doing here and how unique and cutting edge of a sustainability program we've developed. Pretty much all the students on campus you ask know what permaculture is and um, that's actually, I'd say that's pretty unusual. And to have an entire campus of, you know, 20,000 plus students who understand the, the concept, even just at a surface level, is really an accomplishment. The senior class gift. They pick one project each year that they want to donate their money to, and this year they picked a permaculture garden. This is nice because it's really small, and it's complex because there's a lot happening with, with these different buildings, you know, different spaces. It's incredibly compact and rocky. Um, not even our pickaxe could, could get through it. So right now that's kind of the, the commitment that we're, that we're working on, is to do one garden on campus each year, or one permaculture landscape on the campus each additional year. So looking ahead for 30 years, we're gonna have more of a, a campus that is turning into an ecological landscape, ecological campus that's producing food and education for the entire campus community. As we align with nature, as we align with nature's rules, there's more than enough for all of us. And so to me, this garden connected to the food service here and actually showing the incredible abundance that we can create locally is, is evidence that these scary messages are false. We can go out and we can really restore these damaged or unproductive ecosystems and start growing food on them and start to strengthen our local communities and strengthen our local economies and make our campuses and our businesses and our homes and our entire lifestyles more sustainable.